Okay, welcome to a fun-filled application session of math where I am going to look at two different types of quadratic application problems that a lot of students see and seem to uh, struggle with when working with quadratics. One of them is a right triangle problem. So the problem itself starts by saying that one leg of a right triangle is seven centimeters less than the length of the other leg. The length of the hypotenuse is 13 centimeters. Find the length of the legs. So the first thing we have to take out of that is that we're talking about a right triangle. So a right triangle has one very special property. And that property that we have is Pythagorean's theorem. Pythagorean's theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Of that, we know c squared represents your hypotenuse. And we know that A and B represent your lengths of the legs. Okay, those are the things that we know. So with this, we have to be able to input the information we've been given. Well, the first thing that we've been given is that we have been told that the length of the hypotenuse is 13 centimeters. And we know a hypotenuse is the longest side of a right triangle. So that tells us that this diagonal side right here is my 13 centimeters. Now the other thing that I know is I know that I have two legs. I have side A and I have side B. With that, I'm also given some more information. And the information that I've been given is the fact that I know one leg is seven centimeters less than the other. So the first thing I have to look at is I have to look at what part of that sentence is important to me. And the part of that sentence that's important to me is that I have seven centimeters less than the length of the other. So I have to be able to put that into a mathematical concept. So I know that if I start with labeling one length of my triangle with a variable, I can say, call this side, side x. Well then what I know about the other one is that this has to then be the length of my first leg minus seven centimeters. So this length over here is gonna be x minus seven. Once you've input all of your stuff, you have to plug it into Pythagorean's theorem in order to solve for your lengths. Because remember, we don't know these two lengths here, we have to find them. So I have A and B. So I need to do x squared, plus my b is really x minus seven. So this becomes x minus seven squared equals c was 13, so 13 squared. So I have a quadratic here that I have to be able to solve. So the first thing that I have to do is I have to take this piece and I have to foil in order to expand it out. So I'm going to have my x squared, because that's going to carry down, plus, and now I need to FOIL. So I have x minus 7 and x minus 7. So this is going to give me x squared. Then I have x times negative 7 and do that twice. So this is minus 14x. And then negative 7 and negative 7 is a positive 49. And then 13 squared is 169. Combine my like terms. And I have 2x squared 
minus 14x plus 49 equals 169. I then need to take this 169 here and I need to move it over. It is positive, so I have to move it through the use of subtraction. And when I do so, I'm going to get 2x squared minus 14x minus 120 is equal to 0. Now, I have this 2 here, and notice each of these terms is even, so I can pull the 2 out. So when I pull that 2 out, I'm left with x squared minus 7x minus 60 equals 0. I can divide that 2 completely out of the system, and so I have x squared minus 7x minus 60 equals 0. At this point, I have to solve the quadratic however I want. Okay, so basically using any method. So those methods could include factoring it down, though it could include the AC bottoms up method. It could include using the quadratic equation. Essentially, once you get to this point, you have to solve it the way you would see fit. So one way that I notice a lot of students try to solve is by the use of factoring. So we have x squared minus a 7x minus 60 equals 0. Factoring says we have to factor into our parts. x squared is going to break into x times x. And then in order to figure out my signs, I have to look at the sign of my last term. And I need to know two signs that are going to multiply and give me a negative. Well, automatically, that's one positive, one negative. And now, I need to have a factor of 60 that combines to give me 7. So, we, you could list out a factor tree um, in order to find that. 60 breaks into uh, 12 and 5, and since I have a negative here, your bigger factor has to be negative. So this means positive 5, negative 12. And now I need to solve. x plus 5 equals 0. x minus 12 equals 0. x equals negative 5. x equals 12. We have to eliminate the negative. And the reason for that is because your length cannot be a negative distance. Therefore, we know our first leg is going to be 12. So we know that leg A is 12 centimeters. And then from that, we also know that leg B is 12 minus 7, which equals 5 centimeters. And thus we have answered our problem. Now the other problem that we have is we have a gravity problem. So this formula up here at the top is actually your gravity formula, where G stands for gravity and is given to you in either 32 feet per second or 9.8 meters per second squared. And that's going to depend on the units in your problem. We know T is going to be your time, which in this case is usually going to be in seconds. We know V naught is your initial velocity. It's how fast you started out going. And H naught is your initial height. That means this H on this other side here would be like, say, your final height. Okay. Now in some problems, you're going to be given your final height as being an actual distance. And in some problems, you're going to be told that final height is ground level. If you are told your height is at ground level, then you would be talking about zero. If you are given a height um, above ground level, well then you would be inputting that number here. Okay. 
So we need to look at what we have, and it says that a ball is thrown upwards with a velocity of 40 feet per second from the top of a 144 foot building. Assuming it misses the building on the way back down, how long after being thrown will it be 10 feet from ground level? So this green square represents your building, and I always recommend drawing a picture. So when we're talking about the height of your building, that's this height here. So we're telling you that this initial height, if you're standing on top of it, would be the height of the building. So that's going to be that 144 feet. What we're doing is we're tossing this ball up, and so it's going to go up until gravity pulls it back down. And so that initial velocity has to do with the speed of which it's being tossed. Since we were told it was 40 feet per second, that's your V-naught number. The last thing we're told is we want to know when it hits 10 feet from ground level. So if you look over here, notice we've marked a spot that would be roughly, say, 10 feet above ground level, ground level being the very bottom of the building. And thus, that is what we want to know when it lands on that spot. So that's our H number. The last thing we know is that this says feet per second. Because my units are in feet, that automatically tells me my gravity has to also be in feet. Therefore, we would use 32 feet per second squared. We have to plug all that information in. So this is what it's going to look like. So we're told that our final height was 10. We're told that our gravity is 32. So this is going to be that negative 1 half and then times your 32. And then the time is the one thing we don't know, so t squared. Then we're given the initial velocity, which was 40 feet per second. And last, we're given the initial height, which is that the building is 144 feet tall. So that is how you plug everything in. From this point, now we simply have to solve that quadratic. So the first thing I would do is I would take this 10 and I would shift it over to the other side. Since it is positive to shift it says I have to subtract. And I'm going to subtract it only from my constant. So here I'm going to get that 0 is equal to negative 1 half times 32 is a negative 16 t squared plus 40 t and then I have 144 minus 10, which is 134. Now, the biggest advice I can give in a problem like this is you want to go immediately to using your quadratic formula. So that quadratic formula, if you remember, is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And in this problem, we know that a is equal to negative 16, b is equal to 40, and c is equal to 134. So we're going to plug all of that stuff in and you are going to wind up with finding out that t is roughly 4.5 seconds. Now in this case, we would use the decimal. So you would actually evaluate this all the way down and you're going to use the decimal because we're talking about seconds here. So it is okay to do the approximate. Um, the easiest thing to do is going to be to use your scientific calculator. Those are basically the two biggest um, application problems that I generally see when we are talking about um, quadratic formulas. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, if not, remember math is bananas, so keep smiling, ask tons and tons of questions, be sure to have lots of fun, relax, and as always, I'll see you next time.